All right, getting ready to make soup. Yum, yum. Let's get to it, people. All right, I'm ready to make soup, but I need the recipe, so I gotta go back out to my car and get the iPad to get going, but here go the ingredients, basically, but I wanna have the correct measurement, so we'll get to it in a minute, but we got bacon, we got some sausage, cauliflower, spinach, gonna have some garlic, got some broth, got some heavy whipping cream, so you know it's gonna be good, right? Okay. Back in a flash. Alrighty, let's get ready to make soup. I wrote down the ingredients. The recipe that I'm using is from uh, Peace, Love, and Low Carb, and she has a cookbook called Craveable Keto. So I follow her on Instagram. I just ordered the book, looking for that to be delivered any day now. So this is a recipe, a soup recipe that's like the Zupa Toscana soup at uh, Olive Garden. So she used fresh ingredients for hers. I'm using a lot of frozen stuff for mine. So let me give you the list of ingredients. Uh, six slices of bacon. The bacon is fresh, right from the Kroger meat counter. So six slices of bacon. I have one bag of frozen cauliflower that I'll use. I have one bag of cut leaf spinach that I'm gonna use. I've got can of, um, I'm actually going to use a chicken broth that I'll add in. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of butter because we'll be using some onion and garlic. So we'll cook that up in some butter. I also have some Italian breakfast sausage. So for a little spice, I have the Italian breakfast sausage that I'll use. We'll be using a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then I've just got some um, red pepper and salt and pepper. Oh, another shortcut I'm using. <laughs> I told I told you that we needed some onion. I'm gonna use a bit of frozen chopped onion. And I also found this um, crushed garlic. I found this at Target yesterday in their uh, freezer section. So each of the little containers is a bulb. So I'll use two bulbs of this, of the garlic also. So that's the ingredients. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is cut up the six slices of bacon. All right, here we go. Step one, I've sliced the bacon up. We are going to fry it. I've got my pan on the stove, so we're just going to dump the bacon in. So we'll let this get brown and crispy. And then what's step number two? Uh, we're then gonna do the onion and garlic. So get this going. Bacon is sizzling along nicely. So as the bacon continues to cook, because we want it to be nice and crispy. As it cooks, I'll just continue to listen to the Christmas music. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. If you do, I don't on the right. Okay. So I showed you the, un the frozen onion I'm going to use and the garlic. Um, once the bacon is done, I'll take that out of the pan and I'll actually add the onion and the garlic right into the um, bacon grease. I mean pull some of the bacon grease off because I'm expecting to cook everything in that one pot so everything will go right in there um, nice easy simple so are you guys holiday ready I bought a couple cups from um, Target holidays for some coffee or hot chocolate or whatever and then this little I guess this is a little tumbler cup yeah it's a tumbler a little set of tumblers so I got my little cups ready for whatever my holiday drinking may be. What's your favorite holiday drink? I 100% love eggnog. A favorite. I love eggnog. Love, love, love eggnog. I think I have some. Yep, I do. Haven't opened this one. But Thanksgiving, I had eggnog. 
and I drank like the whole little thing. I like this brand, Southern Comfort. No, this itself does not have any alcohol or adult beverage in it. Just eggnog. I love it. Sometimes I'll even add it to my coffee as my creamer. Love, 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 love. Yummy. All right, let me finish checking on this bacon. <laughs> the baking crisping continues. Not all the way there yet. But getting there. All right. The crispiness has improved, so I'm going to drain that out of the grease. The bacon fat. Okay. I left just a little bit of uh, uh, bacon fat in here. I drained most of it off. I'm going to add in, like I said, I have some frozen chopped onion that I'll add in. Just some that I think will be enough for my liking to be in the soup. Onion in and of itself, I don't think is necessarily uh, keto, so just watch how much you put in here. And again, I've got the frozen garlic according to these directions. One cube is a clove, so I'm going to pull out or push up two of them. Oh, and it's easy. It's frozen. You just literally push up the whole cube. <laughs> okay, that's different. That's a little different. Let's get number two pushed up and out of here. It literally just comes right up and out. I guess I let it sit out too long, so it got almost unthawed. Okay. But I cleared them out pretty much, the cubes. So I'll let that... Just saute a little bit. I'm going to, I am going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. You know what? Because it did weirdo, I think I'm going to do a third one. I think I'm going to do a third one. Okay, this will be the reason not to buy it anymore. Or if you buy it, don't let it unthaw at all. Make sure you keep it frozen until you're ready to pooch it out. Okay. That was almost a mess. But we made it through. All right. Let me throw a little salt and pepper over it. Real life, y'all. Real life. I am not a chef. I'm just a girl in her kitchen, trying to be great. <laughs> okay, so we'll let, mmm, definitely smells good. Just that little bit in there. Uh, so we'll let this saute just a little bit in the skillet. And then to this, once this sautes a bit, gets a little brown, uh, I'm going to add in the pack of um, Italian breakfast sausage. Alrighty. Just to let you see how much garlic and onion I have in the skillet. More than enough. And that little garlic is really fragrant, so that's a good thing. So let that get sauteed just a little bit more, and I'll be adding in the Italian breakfast sausage. Alright, I've got some um, grass-fed butter, and I'm going to add about a tablespoon in there with the um, onion and garlic. All right, if that does its thing, I'm gonna just slice open the sausage. Let's turn this down a little bit. All righty, I'm gonna just cut the package open. So I can just dump it into the skillet. And again, I had the Italian flavor. Just because I figured it would be kind of cool to go with that. So, literally, just going to dump it in and I'll come back through and mix it all up. So we'll get the sausage mixed up and browned up. 
And then we'll be on to the next step. My sausage is browning nicely. I am going to add a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes to the sausage. Just a couple shakes. Add a little extra spice to the soup. That was more than a couple, but, you know, put enough in to your liking. Okay, we've got the <coughs> sausage cooked up nice and fine. All done. I'm going to add the bacon back into here with that, along with the little leftover bacon fat that was there. And to this mix, I'm going to add in the chicken broth. Um... The recipe calls for six cups of broth. So let me just pour in, pour them in the broth. And we're going to let that come to a boil. And then after this gets to boiling, we're going to add in the cauliflower and then the spinach. All right. Okay, we got a nice little boil going. So I'm going to pour in the cauliflower. And as you watched and saw, I haven't added any additional seasoning except for the little bit of salt and pepper that I added uh, onto the onion and garlic mix. Only because of the salt from the bacon and then the seasoning from the Italian sausage. I did add a little bit of additional red pepper flake, but I'd rather wait until the soup is all cooked and done before I add any additional salt or pepper because I don't want to over salt it. So we got the garlic, I mean, I'm sorry, we have the cauliflower added in. That was just one bag. I wasn't sure how one bag would do. Uh, I think I may add my second bag of cauliflower in. Yeah, I think I'm going to add the second bag, which is only like 20, uh, what, I think a bag was 12 ounces, maybe? Yeah. So, I think I will add the second bag in. Or maybe not. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. I'll keep it as it is. First time out doing it. We'll see. Nah, I think I am. I like cauliflower. I'm going to add in another bag. Easy enough to do. So just put the second bag on over in here as well. Bag number two. Into the mix. Yeah. That looks better. I like a good hearty soup. So I'm going to let that boil just for a bit. Then I'll add the spinach in. And let that sit in there just for a minute. And again, just one bag of frozen spinach that I have that I'll just pour in also. all up together and we'll add lastly in let me the only thing we have left to add in after all this mixes together is one cup of heavy whipping cream so I'm going to let this all mix in together first before I actually add in the one cup of heavy whipping cream let's get us a nice little boil going here All right, just going to mix it all in together and wait for a nice little boil to begin. I am going to put the top over it. All right, we've got a nice boil going on here. So I'm going to pour in the cup of heavy whipping cream. Get 
third through. Get some additional creamy goodness going on in here. Top back on it. I'm gonna just lower it down a bit and let it continue cooking. Sorry for not showing myself, but again, just lower the um, temp of the stove down and we'll let it continue to simmer. And soon there will be soup. <laughs> Simmering together nicely. Yum. Zupa Toscana, low carb version. <laughs> All right, we've got the bacon added in. We'll add it back in. We've got the heavy whipping cream. So now I'm gonna let it uh, simmer. I've turned the temp down. I'm gonna let it simmer probably only about 10 or 15 minutes actually. Um, again, I've adapted the recipe from Peace, Love and Low Carb. And she used fresh cauliflower as well as fresh spinach. Everything that I used was frozen, so um, I won't have to let it simmer like 30 minutes like uh, the recipe calls for. But once it's done and simmered, you can add, you know, some additional seasonings if you need to. I'm thinking probably not too much because of the bacon that was added back in. That probably has more than enough. May add a little bit of black pepper to it and or some, some cheese, maybe some Parmesan or whatever your favorite cheese may be. And again, a nice, easy, simple way to enjoy a keto-ish, a low, not a keto-ish, but a keto um, and or low carb soup. So I'm looking forward to having that. Um, it's late now this evening, so I won't eat it this evening, but I'll be all ready for lunch and dinner tomorrow with my soup. So um, I'll list the ingredients at the end of this and uh, definitely try it out. Let me know what you think. I'll list the recipe as it is from Peace and Low Carb uh, and try it out, see what's what. All right, thanks for watching. Until next time, folks, peace. And here's the finished product. Low carb, keto, Zupa Toscana soup. Yummy yum.